boxing was seen as the perfect test of brain and brawn. When we boxed, boys from older squads were often brought in. The physical difference between 12 and 14 year olds are huge. They really beat us up. It was all about toughness. By 1937, Himmler's stranglehold on the Napolis was almost total. But other leading Nazis had grown jealous. By 1937, senior Nazis had begun to distrust the SS influence over the Napola schools. In response, the Nazis' head of organization, Robert Ley, founded the Adolf Hitler schools. The Adolf Hitler schools were designed to produce politicians, not soldiers. We were to be loyal followers of Hitler and faithful Nazis. Independent thinkers with our own will who could assert ourselves and make decisions. That wasn't possible, of course. You can't be a loyal Nazi and also think critically. Robert Ley himself set a poor example to the boys. It was a fact that during his speeches in the courtyard, he was often drunk. He kept on saying the same old things. You're lucky. You've got it good. It's nice here. The most exciting thing that happened to me at school was when Wolfgang Dreyer from Hamburg, School 9, suddenly stood up and said, Reich leader, did you know that people think you're a drunk? Then Robert Ley slumped a little and said, rather quietly, Boys, you can do anything. Just don't become drinkers. The Adolf Hitler schoolboys were showered with special privileges. They wanted for nothing. We had a lot of opportunities, trips, maneuvers, as we called them. We could go skiing and we went to the Alps and the lakes. That was unusual for a boy in those days. If you want to seduce, you must offer seductive things. That happened to us. We were seduced very cleverly. The most exclusive of all the elite schools was the Reichsschule at Feldafing near Munich. Here boys boarded in mansions abandoned by wealthy Jewish businessmen. They were mansions that used to be owned by Jews. They had either sold up because of the pressure of the boycott on April the 1st, 1933, when it didn't look as though they could stay, or they'd fled the country without selling. The Reichsschule at Feldafing became home to the sons of high-ranking Nazi officials. These boys were promised glittering futures 
and were dismissive of the other elite schools. We always said Napola, Napola, or Adolf Hitler schools, or oh, please. We thought they were so far below us. We regarded ourselves as the best of the party schools. In all Hitler's schools, lessons were taught within the context of Nazi philosophy. So maths was reborn as the science of war. A plane flying at an altitude of 2,000 meters and a speed of 108 kilometers per hour drops a bomb on Warsaw. When and where does the bomb hit the ground? In history, the main topic was the Treaty of Versailles, the peace settlement that humiliated Germany at the end of the First World War. We were constantly reminded of that shameful peace because we had to recover the territories that were lost in 1918 and 1919. We definitely had to get them back. It was our duty to ensure we recovered them. Hitler's schoolboys also had to learn languages to be ready one day to rule over the greater German Empire. We were to be sophisticated, multilingual. I remember a teacher joking, you're nothing until you speak ten Arabic dialects without a trace of German accent. Boys were meant to be as confident on the dance floor as on the battlefield. Boys, I want you to be able to say, kiss my ass" as easily as you say, my dear lady. The future leaders of Germany were expected to gain experience of working in industry and on the land. The idea was to acquire an understanding of the workers they would one day control. Conversations with farmers raised some difficult questions. What is it like now the Jews have gone? The farmer said, bad, the livestock trade has collapsed. A student said he shouldn't take such a narrow view, but should think of the underlying principle. We didn't know enough to argue the practical points. Although the elite Nazi schools boasted of excellence, Educational standards were poor. At selection camps, teachers were hand-picked for their commitment to national socialism rather than their intellectual ability. One of the main educational methods was to instill in us absolute punctuality, absolute discipline and absolute obedience. Zu unabdingbarem Gehorsam. Of course, as teachers, we had to pass this on to our pupils. It was clear that our teachers were recruited from the Hitler Youth. They were good comrades and had the best intentions, but not enough knowledge. So, by today's standards, I think we were poorly educated. I'm ashamed of how little we knew about German writers and poets, from man to Ben, and how poor our knowledge of mathematics was, when I compare it with my grandchildren today. Intellectually, it was a poor result. 